I think we're on. Okay. One thing you have to be careful of when you're using an oscilloscope that has a times 10 probe is something we call compensation. To make this probe times 10 or 10 to 1, it means that they've built in a voltage divider network inside of it that takes whatever voltage I apply to the input and divides it down by a factor of 10 before it goes into the oscilloscope. This is why we can connect this to a 9 volt battery and show it going up almost two divisions when we only have 0.5 volts per division. With the times one probe, this would be blown off the scale by the strength of the 9 volt battery. But this is a times 10 probe, so having a times 10 probe on the scope means that effectively this is no longer one half volt per division, it is five volts per division, which is why two divisions equals, or almost two divisions equals a nine volts. However, there's a cost, of something we pay when we do that. When we use a times 10 probe, this probe has capacitance built into the coaxial cable, and the scope itself has capacitance right at the input, right at the uh, channel input. In fact, if I remove this, remove the camera in just a little bit closer, we can see there's a 25 picofarad rating to the input of the oscilloscope. What that means is that that capacitance there, coupled with a very large, about 9 mega ohm or so resistor that they put inside of this cable, has a tendency to distort the waveform. We get an RC time constant sort of effect. And we, we need to make sure that that distortion is not excessive. So the way we compensate for that, it's a little bit difficult to um, describe without drawing a picture on, on paper, an equivalent circuit. But the way we compensate for the capacitance inside the scope is we actually add a little bit of capacitance um, in series with an RC network in the inside of this divider. And that has the effect of compensating for the capacitive RC curve that would otherwise be generated by the oscilloscope's own internal capacitance. To show how this works, I'm going to connect this probe to my built-in 1 kilohertz signal generator and show you how this works. Right there you see a nice clean square wave exactly the, what we'd expect to come out of this uh, socket right here. If the compensation is not set up properly on the 10 to 1 probe, we will not see a clean square wave. We will see something like this. I will purposely throw off the compensation. That's what it would look like if all we had was a bare cable connected to the oscilloscope with that 9 mega ohm resistor in series for the 10 to 1 division. The combination of that huge 9 mega resistor and the, the oscilloscope's built-in capacitance forms a RC time constant. <coughs> and that gives a rounded effect to any square wave. So what we're seeing here is a distortion. That's not the real square wave. That's what the oscilloscope thinks it is because we have not compensated properly for that built-in capacitance. So they build in another capacitor into the probe assembly itself, and this one is variable. And our task here is to adjust this capacitor until we get back to a nice clean square wave. If it's overcompensated, you get that. So you can have too much compensation capacitance in the probe as well. You want to have just enough, not too much, not too little, just enough to compensate for the built-in capacitance of the oscilloscope. And you know that you're there when you get a nice, clean, sharp-edged square wave. Now, in case you're wondering, a lack of proper compensation will affect not just square waves, but any wave that you apply to the oscilloscope. The reason we're doing it with the square wave here, making our adjustments with the square wave input, is because for us as human beings, it's easy for us to see when the compensation is off if we have a square wave. We all know exactly what a square wave ought to look like. If it's any other form of wave that has an irregular shape, it would be very difficult for us to look at that and say, oh, that's not compensated properly. So we start with something that's unknown. And so we have this built-in square wave generator, and we use a screwdriver to allow us to set that compensation capacitor. And that is something you have to do anytime you use a times 10 probe, a 10 to 1 probe. It always should have a compensation capacitor somewhere. Sometimes it's built in down here, but with other probe assemblies, it's built into the probe barrel itself. But it will be there somewhere to compensate for that capacitance.